Hello, my name's Mia and I'm with the Museum of Natural and Cultural History at the University of Oregon. The museum is located on Kalapuya Elihi, the traditional homeland of the Kayapuya people. At the museum, we explore the history of Oregon, both the history of its people, as well as the history and science of all the things in the natural environment, like the trees, the forests, the oceans, rocks, animals, plants, volcanoes, all the things that make up our natural environment. Today, we're going to explore an important part of our natural environment, Oregon's amazing animals. We all know that there are a huge variety of animals in Oregon. Many of those animals you might be familiar with, like deer, beavers, salmon, cougars, crabs, butterflies, sharks, slugs, and lots of different kinds of birds, from owls to geese to woodpeckers. But there's so many more. Did you know that Oregon has giant salamanders? Pacific giant salamanders live in Oregon's clear, icy mountain streams. They can grow up to 14 inches long and make a croaking sound similar to that of a barking dog. We also have the candy-striped leafhopper, an insect that looks like a colorful piece of candy and secretes a sugary substance that other insects like to eat. Or how about this oh-so-cute relative of the raccoon? The ringtail is a small, nocturnal animal that is an excellent climber. In fact, the ringtail has back feet that can rotate 180 degrees so that they can climb down a tree head first with their back claws hanging on as they go. This fascinating animal also lives in Oregon. The lamprey is an eel-like fish with a large suction cup style mouth that they attach to other fish or marine mammals and suck their blood for food. Lamprey are among the oldest fish in the world and have been around for over 450 million years. I want to introduce you to another animal that lived in Oregon a long time ago. The Colombian mammoth lived here in Oregon over a million and a half years ago, up until about 11,000 years ago when they went extinct. That means there are no longer any of these animals living here on Earth. The Colombian mammoth is different from the woolly mammoth because woolly mammoths lived farther north where it was colder and they needed to have a thick coat of hair or fur on their body. The Colombian mammoth lived in warmer climates and so they didn't need to have that hair or fur to keep them warm as insulation. All animals have features or body parts that help them to live and adapt to the environment. These are called adaptations. Think about a rabbit's long ears. How do you think its ears helps it to survive? Cup your hands like this and put them behind your ears and listen to my voice. Does my voice get any louder? A rabbit's big ears catch the sounds in the environment so that he can hear better and hear if another animal is getting close. Another Oregon animal, the octopus, has adaptations that help it to stay safe from predators in the environment. An octopus can change the color and texture of its skin in order to blend into the environment and be harder to see. This is called camouflage. Octopus also have a soft body with no bones, so they're able to fit through little tiny cracks in the rocks. This slime is like the soft body of an octopus. Imagine an octopus this size trying to get through a hole that size. They can change the shape of their body to squeeze through that hole in the rocks and escape a predator that might be following it and can't fit through the hole itself. Going back to the mammoth, their trunk is also an adaptation. Mammoths eat plants and they need that long, flexible trunk to reach up to the plants and down to the plants and then bring those plants up to their mouths to eat them. The Colombian mammoth is one of my favorite Oregon animals. Now let's head inside the museum and explore some more. Not only are there lots of different animal species that live in Oregon, there are also lots of different ecosystems where those animals live. There's forests and valleys, deserts and oceans. An ecosystem is a group of living things, plants and animals, and their physical environment, all interacting together to form a system. Think about the ocean ecosystem. Imagine all the living things in the ocean, many different animals and plants, they are all interconnected and dependent on each other for survival because each one plays its part in the system. Ocean plants that get their energy from the sun are then a food source for the tiny krill or shrimp that then get eaten by small fish. 
Then those small fish get eaten by bigger fish and the bigger fish get eaten by even larger animals like sharks. If one part of that system is missing, other animals might go hungry. A strong and healthy ecosystem needs to have lots of different animals and plants. This is called biodiversity. Bio means life and diversity means variety. Having biodiversity makes an ecosystem more resilient and better positioned to handle changes or problems. Ecosystems can and do change over time. Animals respond to this by either adapting to the new environment or moving away. If animals can't adapt or move, they might go extinct. Oregon's environment has changed in huge ways over millions of years, but even in Oregon's past, there have always been lots of different kinds of animals living here. Check out this giant spike-toothed salmon that lived in Oregon's rivers about 13 to 14 million years ago. They had giant spiked teeth that stuck out to the sides and were probably used to fight and protect themselves and their territory. This is the skull of a giant beaver. Look at the difference in size between the giant beaver and beavers that live in Oregon today. The giant beaver lived here in Oregon at the same time as the Columbian mammoth during the last ice age. At this same time, there were lots of other fascinating animals that roamed the land, including saber-toothed cats, also known as Smilodon, a species of camels. Yes, it's true, camels used to live in Oregon. And the teratorn, or monster bird, which was about three feet tall and had a wingspan around 10 or 12 feet long. And then there's the giant ground sloths. These huge plant-eating creatures were too big and heavy to climb trees, so they lumbered around on the ground eating plants from that level. They had a wonderful adaptations in their huge claws. They could use those claws to reach up and get plants out of the trees and to dig in the ground to find food. They could also use those claws for protection from predators. All of these big Ice Age animals went extinct about 11 to 12,000 years ago. So how do we know that they even existed? We know because of fossils. Fossils are evidence of the remains of living things from long time ago that have been preserved over time. Let's talk to a scientist here at the University of Oregon that studies these ancient fossils. Hi, I'm Edward Davis. Uh, I'm the curator of fossils uh, here at the Museum of Natural and Cultural History. Thanks for having me today. Paleontologists are scientists who study past life in any form. So we're trying to understand how animals and plants, fungi and microbes all lived and, and, and died in Earth um, through the entire history of life on Earth. I love being a paleontologist because it means that every day I get to look at extinct animals that are from millions of years ago. Um, several times a year, I'll get to see things that no human being has ever seen before because I'm opening up rocks, I'm digging up fossils that haven't been seen before. So it's just really um, an exciting experience and I feel like I'm getting to participate in science every day of my life. Being a paleontologist sounds like an interesting career. Today we're studying animals. Can you tell us what we can find out about animals by studying fossils? Well, we can learn a lot about uh, what ecological role they played in the environment when they were alive. You know, were they herbivores or were they carnivores? Were they big animals or small animals? We can learn a lot about their evolutionary relationships, so how they've changed over time to adapt to changing environments. The fossils on display here at the museum are only the small portion of all the fossils in our collections. Can you tell us about the museum's fossil collections and also show us some cool animal fossils from Oregon? The fossil collections of the University of Oregon are um, they're really a special treat. Most of our fossils actually come from Oregon. We have fossils of animals, we have fossils of plants, we even have fossils of some ancient organisms that people aren't sure if they're animals or plants, or maybe they're actually like lichens, so they're a symbiosis of different things together. So we have a lot of fossil camels in here, some really big ones, like giant camels. This is a neck vertebra from a really big camel. This is a humerus, so an upper arm bone from one of these giant camels. This is the foot bone. So this is actually the bone in the middle of the foot. And the toes would have been out here and the rest of the leg would have been up there. This 
isn't stretched out compared to a modern camel. So each one of these vials has a single mouse tooth in it. Crinoids are an animal that are commonly associated with fossils from the Paleozoic, the time before dinosaurs. But there are still crinoids that live today in the oceans. I think that's really cool. They're beautiful. They're related to sea stars, sea urchins, sand dollars. This is a face of a fossil sea lion. You can see its canine tooth here and some of its molar teeth back here. I would have been right there. So some of the earliest whales that evolved had these teeth that actually look a lot like shark teeth. And that's what squalodon means. It means like shark tooth. This is a fossil mammoth tusk from the town of Ione, Oregon. This is a fossil rhinoceros skull from uh, the late Miocene, so from between probably five and 10 million years ago that lived in Eastern Oregon. The oldest vertebrate from Oregon. So Shastasaurus is an extinct kind of ichthyosaur. This one would have been like a big whale kind of an animal, but living during the age of dinosaurs. And so it was actually a marine reptile. I can show you one of my favorite fossils right here. I happen to have this squashed skull of an animal called Dromomeryx. This used to be an entire skull of an animal about the size of a deer, and it was actually buried in a volcanic ash deposit, and as the ash compacted over time, it squished the skull down until it was flat like a pancake. Thanks, Edward. Not only do fossils show us the cool animals that lived in the past, they also show us how animals change over time to adapt to their changing environment. Take this tiny horse, the Myohippus, lived in Oregon up to 39 million years ago. And it's obviously smaller than a modern horse, but it has another important difference too. Horses today have a narrow hoofed foot and their toe bones are fused together so that they actually walk on just one tippy toe on each foot. But take a look at the hip foot on the Myohippus. He walks on three toes. These early horses lived in the forest where it helped them to be small and have wide feet for the soft ground. Also, they could maneuver and hide amongst the trees and the shrubs in the forest. But over time, the earth got warmer and drier and the environment changed to be more open grasslands in this area. Horses slowly adapted over millions of years to, to be larger and to have longer legs with narrow, one-toed feet. This helped them to run faster on the hard-packed grounds of the grasslands then they could escape predators easier and also travel farther to find food. I wonder what Oregon will be like a million years into the future. If we take care of our environment, I'm sure that there will still be a huge variety of living things here in our state. Now let's look at some fun activities that you can do to continue exploring animals at home. Many of you have the Oregon's Amazing Animals Home Activity Kit. But if you don't have a kit, you can still do many of these activities because the materials are things you can probably find around the house. In each kit, there is an activity guide that gives you instructions and pictures showing you how to do each activity. You can do one activity a day or try them all in one day. It's up to you. One of the activities in the kit gives you two different animals, one each from a different ecosystem, like this bear and octopus and you are challenged with creating a habitat diorama for each of the animals showing their home environment, their habitat. A diorama is a 3D model of a scene or a place. Here at the museum, we use large diorama like this one to show what Oregon was like thousands of years ago. For your dioramas, you can use boxes like this shoe box or any box you might have around the house to create a habitat for each animal. Get creative with different materials you can find, either outside, like these leaves and rocks, and sticks or shells, or anything you can find around the house, like cotton balls or different shapes of pasta, old fabric, bubble wrap, different kinds of materials you might have in the kitchen, recyclable things like these bottle caps and lids. 
You can find different craft materials like tissue paper and colored paper, craft sticks, and things to decorate with like pens and paint. You can even create other animals for the environment using clay or Play-Doh um, or drawing animals to go inside of your habitats. If you don't have the kit, you can use animals you might have at home or draw or create a model of your own animal to put inside of a habitat. Here at the University of Oregon, we definitely love our ducks. The materials for the next activity are ones that will help you to explore how ducks are adapted to live in their wet environment. You can explore duck feathers and figure out how they're waterproof to help a duck stay warm and dry and help them float. You can also examine insulation and do an experiment to see what materials might insulate better. And you can even create a webbed foot with a bag and see what it's like for a duck to paddle under the water. Many animal adaptations help animals to sense the world around them. You can explore how different animals hear by making an ear funnel out of a sheet of paper like that. And you can put that funnel up to your ear and try to catch the sounds around your world. Or you can try to feel the sound vibrations Tie a string to a metal object like a spoon, wind that string around your fingers, and put those fingers into your ears to plug your ears. When you hit the spoon against a hard surface, see what happens. You can even design your own shapes of ears to see how it changes the hearing, like these tubes, or even these big flat rabbit ears. Another activity in the kit explores the flow of energy through an ecosystem. That means who eats what in the ecosystem. You can make these paper dominoes and explore what happens when one part of an ecosystem goes away and how all the different animals depend on each other for survival. You can keep the animal explorations going by trying out the scavenger hunt, which has you looking for evidence of life both inside and outside. You can also try the critter camouflage challenge where you color in animals to blend into your environment and challenge somebody to find them. I hope you had a great time today with Oregon's amazing animals. I hope someday you'll be able to come and visit our museum and check it all out for yourself. To find more fun activities, visit our website at mnch.uoregon.edu.